Hello everyone out there, this is Benjamin Looms of Sirenscape and the Dice Stormers here down in Tasmania in Hobart uh, where I'm down doing an opera project here with Wat Opera. Uh, I've been to Salamanca Markets this morning and I have this new fantastic t-shirt which I like very, very much. <laughs> Oh, so fantastic. Um, yes, I'm going to talk to you today about uh, voices at the gaming table, so accents and voice affectations and things like that. Uh, we use them in the Dice Stormers. My voices at the table are highly variable. Sometimes they're quite successful and they really add to the mood of the table and sometimes they kind of verge towards ridiculous and uh, upsetting and embarrassing. <laughs> so um, look, I'm not, not preaching as someone who's a, an expert at this, but just someone who's had quite a lot of uh, thinking about it, and I have quite a few ideas that some of which you might find interesting. So, voices at the table, yeah, look, I think every character you do, whether it's a character that you're playing as a player, uh, in particular, but also NPCs, really could benefit from some kind of change from your normal voice. There are so many different ways you can do this, and uh, I'm just going to list off and give some examples. Try and give some examples and make them sound cool of the ways you could do this. So, the number one obvious way, of course, is to use real-world accents. Now, there are a series of videos online, which I shall link to down below, um, describing uh, quick ways of getting access to these world accents. Often it's just a matter of changing one thing. No, if you like me, you like listening to world accents, have a little bit of a listen, and you go, oh, to her, to her, to her, it's a lovely thing to speak like the Irish. And you can speak like that at the table, and it gives you a particular character straight away. And oh, yes, 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 oh, you can speak like that, and that really just absolutely overjoys my players and makes them want to stab me in the eye, which gives a good reaction. Or, of course, you can speaky speaking like this. Um, none of these are uh, very good, but they all colour the voice immediately and um, also create expectations in the way your character might behave or the way people might react to you. <laughs> oh, I'm so bad at this. But they're nevertheless, they're um, good ideas. Now, the problem with real world accents, of course, is that takes us into the real world, and where, since we're playing in a fantasy world, sometimes it's better to affect the voice in, in, a, in a different kind of way. So you can make up your own vocal style or accent. And some of the ways I've experimented with the past and some ideas I've been thinking about for this video, um, there was a character called Ras. I love rolling my R's at the gaming table. Um, and he, he, in one of our Star Wars games, he was like, I'm not sure about that. Yes, I, I, I think we should definitely stay to the left. The large building coming. Um, I enjoyed that accent. It was quite a straightforward thing. All I had to do was go in between everything that I sort of said, and that immediately gave my character an alien, um, in in fact, sort of appearance, and evoked for people uh, even alien anatomy in my speech parts, which I really really liked. You can even add just a single letter to what you are saying, uh, which might make you feel a little. Uh, nervous and you can just keep going back mm, to that letter and um, yes you might have a PC that does that but now the players are not going to forget the way that PC talks very quickly at all. Um, you can speak with a rough voice. Yes uh, Nathan in the Dice Stormers did this once and uh, after he'd done it for about three hours it kind of took large chunks of his voice out and put them on the table in little piles of bloodiness. <coughs> so you've got to be very careful with a rough voice because it can really hurt you. Um, if, if you don't mind having a really sore voice for the entire next day then it can be a really really fun thing to do. Um, you can speak really fast and, and, and trip over yourself just by chilly speak, just, just by really speaking really really fast and you, you'll actually naturally stumble over yourself and make, make yourself seem really tense and nervous and, uh, and, and, and like, like, like rethinking or maybe lying or something like that. So, that's, so that can be a really good thing. If you just speak as absolutely fast as you can and then you could get confused and you have to stumble over what you're saying and, um, and that, that can be a really interesting affectation. Um, yes, of course. Uh, you can stutter. Yes, in... in um, in my uh, Little Red Riding Hood and the Werewetter, uh, her father stuttered, which was really interesting and um, um, makes, it, <laughs> makes the players wait for what's actually going to be coming. So that's quite an easy thing to do. Um, I would really recommend practicing these things before you play, obviously. Just practice a few, uh, you know, a few affectations. Um, if, if I tend to try and pick them up on the run, uh, they often will dissolve into some horrible parody and uh, kind of get actually laughable, which is obviously not the point. So when I practice them, they've actually turned out really well. Um, good. You could be very depressing. Um, I love Nathan's character in one of our Star Wars games. Was no, never mind. It um, it'll probably go wrong. Yes. Um, this actually obviously affects the feeling at the table quite a lot. Um, 
but it can be an interesting kind of effect. Uh, yeah, we could try that, I suppose. Um, or you could be really super positive and I'm sure that'll work, that'll be absolutely fantastic. Let's go ahead, you're doing such a great job, you know. Oh, it's really amazing. Um, so yes, you can even um, also try linguistic and grammatical effects, like you could have refused to address people directly. So you might say, um, well, uh, were I to respond to such uh, an, an indifferent um, uh, proposal, I, I might consider it uh, as an option that I would accept uh, if it were proposed to me as less than uh, that price immediately. Um, hmm, yes. Uh, of course, you can see I'm automatically incorporating body language into a lot of these. Uh, in my imagination, it, uh, so that it, actually that voice uh, feeds through one core idea that goes through the rest of the character. There are more grammatical, there's so many ideas! It's not going to be a short video. Uh, you can speak uh, with a, a, a single idea applied, so you can avoid using any articles, any the or a. Uh. So, could you please give me sword? I go to dungeon to kill monster. This is vicious monster. It is terrorized town. Town people very scared of monster. And you can see that immediately makes me think about the way I'm speaking, which makes changes my speech from the way I normally speak. It slows me down, in fact, because I'm having to monitor what I um, am saying. I did one the other day in the game Jack and the Beanstalk where I left out any words with the letter E in them. So, I saw this on a television show. You must say things without word thing post C. It am hard to do, but is good thing. And uh, that was made for very interesting because I had to try and give the players information and respond to their questions with this weird affectation. Now, what they did, which was fantastic, I practiced this all afternoon, it was heaps faster than what I was just then, that was really taking my brain. They passed a, uh, cast a, a tongue spell and gave me the ability to speak common, <laughs> which was fantastic. So my character was suddenly like, this is very strange being able to talk normally very unusual <laughs> and that was really really cool it actually made the tongue spell really really make sense so he went from being a you know a, a, a chen sha person um trying to desperately speak the common tongue w without you know so we're tripping over himself and there was this this communication barrier there were certain words he just couldn't say so he was having to try and find other ways of expressing himself and then they cast the tongue spell and suddenly he could communicate them with them really really clearly which made of course my clerics feel absolutely awesome Good! You can add a little part to the end of every sentence. So you could say, we are, you are proposing we go to the dungeon? Yes, indeed. Well, there are vicious monsters in the dungeon? Yes, indeed. Ah, uh, we should gain, yes, indeed, the help of a cleric? Yes, indeed. A cleric would be very helpful, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> or uh, a, 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 call, a cleric might have a religious um, call, so In Abadar's name I, I, I grant thee welcome. In Abadar's name I give you this money gratefully. In Abadar's name I rebuke you. In Abadar's name. You know, I love in Battlestar Galactica they always say uh, they take all the monotheistic um, little little bits we have, um, you know, in... in, in uh, I mean, gods in the name of the gods, or yeah, and they pluralize it because they, they have polytheistic gods in Battlestar. I can't think of any right now on the spot. I should have written them down. Never mind, but I'm sure if you know the show, you'll know exactly what I mean. Good, you can speak very, very, very formally to everyone. Good day to you, sir. It is great to make your acquaintance on this fine, excellent morning. Uh, no, indeed, thank you for your request. I shall take it in due consideration that you are telling me to uh, vacate the area in front of you so you can make your passageway beyond where I am currently stationed at the bar. Um, yeah, that's really, really fun. Makes you a pompous kind of character, which is really good. And see, all these actually affect the character straight away. Not too many left, but if you're interested in this stuff, it's been worthwhile, I'm sure. You can change, you can change the pitch of your voice. Oh, so you can speak up on high voice. Hello. Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. It's a f fantastic day. Oh, goodness me. Oh, you can be like that. Yes, 
It's a lovely day. You can go up into your falsetto if you're a man. Hello. Um, uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. You get out of my way. Or you can put your voice down low. My George, you are going to pay. Now lower, lower your legs. Ho, ho, ho. And uh, deepen your voice. By George. There's nothing I would rather do than run this sword through you, you thing. Ah! Um, so yeah. I have even been tempted to use the broad Australian accent in my own accent and highlight it. So, g'day mate, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a fantastic thing to meet you in the dungeon like this, mate, mate, mate. Oh, it's fantastic. Straight. Um, but uh, they'd always, see, once again, the, the, the real world accents tend to uh, put me off a bit because they tend to <laughs> evoke in me and my players' uh, expectations and, and transport us out of that fantasy world. Um, of course, yes, so, so make sure you include posture um, in what you're saying. So. What? Ah, I don't know about that. I'll have to see. And then you can actually, of course, go back into your normal voice. So you can say, uh, Erastus walks up to him and says, Indeed, young fellow, what are you trying to suggest? And I'm going to try and, you know, really intimidate, or so do intimidate Rollis. How does it go with you? Yeah, and so, um, or you can obviously be all hunched. Hello, sweetie. You're mighty fine today, aren't you? <laughs> um, yeah, so definitely include your posture in it. Well, you know, we're, we're not LARPing here, but we're trying to project that character and express as much as possible. Fantastic! Yeah, do switch out of your accent when you're back into playing, um, uh, uh, <laughs> playing being your normal self, and so you make a difference within the player and the character. Um, when I'm trying to first pick up an accent, I tend to stay in it as much as possible. <laughs> <laughs> like my Scottish Viking. I find it very hard to maintain Scottish accents uh, in the face of my Irish accent coming through all the time. Um, so I kind of spoke in Scottish all the time until the, the other players wanted to stab me in the eye with a pencil. Uh, and look, you don't have to be a master of these accents, believe me, because I'm not and I get away with it. Um, you just have to have a go. And for me, when a player just talks in their bland, normal accent at the table, I kind of feel a bit it, a bit sad and it helps to cure me of the immersion. Um, that uh, you know I'm passionate about. Um, so I, I really love it when a player goes to some kind of effort, uh, particularly when it's when it's a male player playing a female character. If you look at my um, Clementine Channer, well, you just watch out. You're not such a naughty boy after all, are you? <laughs> it doesn't take much of a distortion of my voice uh, to not alert people on every single thing I say that I'm not a female. Obviously, I'm not a female, and and. Uh, we're also not getting 17 takes of these voices and uh, making sure we get it right and clearing everything up. And look, if the voice, if, if you bollocks up the accent and drift from from Irish to Scottish to Pakistani like like I do, um, you know, and you create fun at the table, well, uh, oh no, fun and laughs, oh! That's kind of what we're trying to do anyway. So there's some ideas. I'd love to have some responses in the comments below and, you know, post a video of, of your own accents. They're, they're, that's most of the ideas that I've had so far with accents. If you have another idea, you know, I, I love those ideas like adding little bits on the end of sentences or not saying the letter E. Or you could, I uh, know, I'm already thinking more like you could speak in Yoda's um, grammatical form with the, the uh, verb the uh, uh, SVO or whatever it is, I forget. No, that's definitely not it. That's that's just normal German. I oh, know, isn't that's not normal. <laughs> I'm confused. Anyway, um, I hope this was informative at all for you. Um, sorry if I rabbit on, but it is a rather long topic which I am quite passionate about. And um, yeah, just game on and try some accents. Let us know how it goes, and um, I'll see you next time for my next Madcap series of ideas. Bye.